<laughs> yeah, you can share your screen and we can continue. Okay, thanks, Evgeny. So, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Mangredas, and today I will share a few interesting ideas about design patterns in further context. Uh, first of all, I will check my background. Uh, then I will briefly introduce the main idea of design patterns in uh, object-oriented programming. Uh, I will also demonstrate the example app I made for this conference. And finally, uh, we will investigate the following design patterns and how they were used to achieve this final result. Um, personally, I am a full stack developer from Lithuania. Uh, primarily, I worked with C Sharp and .NET stack, uh, and of course, the various uh, front end frameworks. Um, after graduating the university, I felt the freedom to expand the knowledge in any field uh, without having those actual deadlines. And I had no prior mobile app development experience, so I wanted to expand my knowledge here. Hence, I found Flutter, and um, be, I've been using it since its version of 0.10.2, which was released in 2018 on November, if I'm right. Um, moving to the main topic, um, some general info about uh, object-oriented programming design patterns. So first, what is a design pattern, right? So in a short form, uh, design pattern is a typical solution to a common problem in software design. Uh, so when I talk about design patterns, even if you find the word design there, it's not about the design, it's about the structure of the code. Maybe design, but of, from the code perspective. Uh, a design pattern itself uh, uh, names, abstracts, and identifies the key aspects of a common design structure that make it useful for creating uh, re reusable object-oriented design. Uh, so design patterns, uh, as Evgeny mentioned about the books, uh, so these patterns gain popularity after uh, this book of, uh, sorry, after this book was released uh, in 1994. I mean, in 1994, I wasn't even born, so, uh it's just just magical to me how this uh, book is still popular uh, nowadays and uh, you won't actually from this book uh, you won't be able to copy paste the complete solution uh, and apply it to your code like using stack overflow right uh, but you could learn how to structure your code properly to avoid the basic object oriented code design pitfalls and by following these ideas, you could speed up the development process, also improve code flexibility and reusability. So uh, moving to our example app. So I prepared uh, Dartupify. It's a simple music playlist management app, which name is not influenced by any other music streaming platform in any way. Uh, even though the application is very straightforward, I've used uh, Block for state management. Uh, I just wanted to show how well the design patterns could be applied to to the state management solutions. Um, so yeah, also for the dependency injection, I've decided to use provider. And if you are interested in this app, you could find the application by following the provided link on the screen. And actually, I have my application here. So as you can see, uh, it has uh, a simple screen of, of music library. So here you can find different collections of uh, music uh, of music libraries. Uh, so you can get into each of them. So the music collection itself could contain other music collections inside as well as just uh, uh, single songs. And you can yeah, go deeper and deeper into the collection and just inspect it. Uh, then you can notice that we have this uh, star uh, icon so when we press on it uh, the song is actually added to to the playlist and if you noticed this uh, little arrow appeared when i uh, assigned the song to the playlist so this arrow just undoes the last operation which was applied so if i click it uh, the last operation is undone so yeah if i click on several of these you could, you could see the results. So let's add some songs to our playlist, maybe from not ACDC collection, but from the other one. So yeah, uh, so we added some several uh, songs to our, our song collection. At the bottom, you could see uh, 
just a summary text which identifies how many collections are in total in all of these collections visible on the screen and also the total duration of, of the song. So if we go inside the collection, you can see that this text is updated. So now we can go to the playlist. We see all the songs which are assigned to our playlist. And also in this page, you can reorder your playlist in any way you like. And also this, uh, this functionality, reorder your playlist, could be, could be undone and also all the previous operations of adding these uh, songs to your playlist could be undone as well. And finally, we have the last page of the app, which is settings page. And there's just a single switch which uh, activates to use the Cupertino widgets. So if we click on it, you can see that the application bar is updated, the switch uh, widget is updated as well, the icons has changed. Also, bottom navigation bar is updated and and one little thing if you could notice even the navigation transition is applied based on the cupertino style guide and yeah so that's big basically the whole application so i guess we can investigate the details on how this application was implemented by using the design patterns so the first design pattern we have here is abstract factory um, its official definition is provided here on the screen, but in general, the pattern is very straightforward. Uh, we abstract the process of objects creation uh, to be more specific, a creation of families of related objects. And yeah, uh, we abstract it by encapsulating the code into a separate factory object, which allows uh, us to use the common interface among all the different uh, factories. So maybe we can move to the structure of this pattern. So first of all, abstract factory is a creational design pattern, which means that its purpose is to create objects. So uh, first of all, um, whoops. Yeah, so first of all, we define the abstract factory interface, uh, which implement uh, interface for object creation. So yeah, we just define the common interface later. we. Uh, create specific uh, factories which implement those uh, interface methods. So if you can see, we have concrete factory one or concrete factory two, which implements the interface. Also, uh, each concrete factory corresponds only to a single variant of products. So it means that if we have one uh, factory, it is responsible only for this uh, number one objects, let's name it that way, and concrete factories only responsible for, for this uh, second part of the objects. Um, also, uh, these uh, specific concrete products should follow the, the same interface as well. Not the same interface as a track factory, but the, uh, a single product interface, which could be different among uh, all the types of projects. Uh, in Flutter case, these classes could be skipped because we have stateless or, uh, or stateful widgets. So we can just extend these classes there. And yeah, that's it. And that's pretty much all about this pattern. So maybe it would be easier to see the specific example. So first of all, we define the interface or abstract class since Dart does not really support interfaces as a class type, right? So we just define an abstract class with with methods uh, be, which do not have their default implementation. So we consider this as, a, as an interface. And also, yeah, so the interface defines those specific methods which should be implemented. And then we have our uh, specific factories. So I created one factories for Cupertino widgets, which creates the Cupertino application bar, bottom navigation bar, loader, page router, switcher, and the same, uh, the same uh, methods are implemented in the material widget factory as well. Um, if we check those specific products, as I mentioned, they extend the stateless widget. Uh, in, uh, yeah, they extend the stateless widget, and we use it as as that abstract interface for our product. So, for Cupertino loader, uh, we just implement the Cupertino activity indicator, which is centered in on the screen. For the material loader, we use the circle progress indicator. Uh, also, um, 
our specific products could be a little bit more complex. So it means that they can, can uh, contain some properties which should be passed using the constructor. And later these properties could be used uh, while rendering those, th those widgets. So that's the switcher for Cupertino, which, which you saw in the settings page. And it's the same for the material widget. And actually I didn't put all the specific uh, uh, widgets which were implemented in the application, but I hope you get the general idea there. Uh, now, uh, the important thing about this pattern is when to use it. Uh, I mean, when we should create uh, the specific factory and how we should select it. So in, in Flutter case, uh, when we, uh, in our uh, root uh, component, we create a, a specific factory based on the default target platform. So uh, it means if we run the application on Android, we create the material widgets factory. If we run the application on iOS, we create the Cupertino widgets factory. And we, we chose the material widgets factory as a default option. Uh, after the specific factory is created, we inject it using the uh, provider and by using the, that common interface, which is shared uh, among all the specific factories. And yeah, and later using the provider, we, can, we could access this factory everywhere inside our app tree, inside our widgets tree. So finally, when we uh, need to create a specific component, as I mentioned, we just uh, uh, take it using the provider watch method and uh, we res we resolve this widget factory using the interface. And when we need to uh, create the render, the actual widget, we just call the specific method on that factory. Important thing to notice here, which actually shows the whole purpose of this uh, abstract factory uh, design pattern is that is that we used only the interface to resolve the specific factory. So it means that uh, the code does not really care about the specific implementation, in implementation, whether we use the material or Cupertino. So we just use the common interface and the injected factory does all the work by itself. So we do not really need to know any more details about, about rendering the specific uh, widget or or a group of widgets. So, okay, we have our widgets as a separate components already implemented. Now we need to somehow glue them together into a single application. So in our case for that, we will use the composite design pattern. Um, when we talk about the composite design pattern, we talk about uh, the tree data structure. So a good example is a Flutter widgets tree. So as you may know, widgets could have child or ch children property properties. Thus, we are able to create uh, the whole app composed of separate widgets as a single tree structure. So the main idea, of course, you could find the definition on the screen, but the main idea of this pattern is to define a common interface that uniformly represents both, uh, both leaf and composite objects. So when talking about leaf nodes, I am having in mind something like uh, like a text widget. When we talk about composite objects, it could be a container, row, column, list view, you name it. We are talking about these complex widgets which we have children assigned to them. And uh, since we implement a common interface for both leaf and composite components, we can treat them in a unified manner when, when rendering them, for instance, or applying any other operations. So uh, the composite is is a structural design pattern since it defines the structure. Um, first of all, we define a common interface for objects in the composition and then define two kinds of components. So it's leaf component and composite component. Uh, leaf node, as you may notice, does not have any sub elements or children. It defines the behavior for primitive objects. So it means that the leaf component actually does the, the whole work inside of it. Uh, what I mean about that, because um, differently from the uh, leaf component, composite contains children. So it means that instead of actually executing the operation, it delegates all work to child components. So it means that it could possibly have no implementation details of how this operation should be executed, but it just delegates all the requests to the children components and tell them just do, do your work, right? 
so yeah, so that's basically the structure uh, of this design pattern. So we can go uh, to the specific implementation details. So first of all, we define a common interface uh, for both leaf and composite nodes. So in this case, you can see it's an iMusic library item, which uh, uh, specifies three methods, one for to get the items count inside the collection. Uh, the other is to get the duration of the song. And the last one is just to render the widget on the screen. And for the leaf node, the implementation is quite simple. It does all the work. So when you need when we need to get the items count, we just return one. When we need to return the duration of the song, we just uh, yeah return the, the value of the of the song uh, of the song's duration. But when we check the composite node, if you could see, it contains uh, items of uh, iMusic li library item interface, and it also exposes uh, a method to add items to the to this composite. And also, when uh, triggering those methods and executing them, it actually delegates the request to the items and then executes the method on a specific item. So for instance, item.getItemsCount or item.getDuration, and then just accumulates all the results and provides the result. So yeah, so about, uh, uh, yeah, so some details on how the whole tree structure is built. So first of all, we get the whole needed information from the repository or API, whatever you're using. Uh, then we put all the, uh, collections uh, into the into a single collections map which is used as a lookup table later we loop through all uh, of these items in the uh, in the lookup table and check whether these items contain parent id we just need to be sure whether the collection belongs to another collection if it's true then we assign the, this collection to its parent then also when we after this for loop, when we built the whole uh, widgets tree uh, of this co composition, then we add the songs to their corresponding collections, and later we return a result of this uh, the result of this composition. So when it comes to rendering, uh, we have uh, our composition right. So it's very straightforward. We just go through the list of 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 the collection items and trigger the build item build item you could see on the line 23 item dot build so what it means uh, we do not really care whether we need to uh, build the the complex composition or just a single song item which implements uh, the same iMusic library item interface we just trigger the the item dot build method and it is rendered it just rendered so that's the main point of, of, of this com composition and, and this the composite design pattern. And also if we if we uh, have a need to render uh, a widget as a standalone widget, uh, we just simply render it as, a, as any other stateless or stateful widget in, in, in Flutter. So we just call the music library song and that's it. So yeah. With the previous two design patterns, we implemented the whole structure of, uh, of our application. So we implemented the structure of it, also implemented the specific products. Um, so now it's time to add the interactivity. Um, and here comes the command design pattern. Uh, of course, as always, uh, the definition is on the screen, but in simple words, command is just a unit of work or a request extracted to a separate class object. Uh, which contains all the required data to execute the operation. So it means that uh, since we have uh, all the needed information inside the class, the request is completely decoupled from the from the sender. But we can, uh, as a result, later we can queue these commands in, into a list, execute them, uh, them at once. Uh, we can change the order of these uh, commands. We can undo the operations since we have all the needed information inside the command itself. And and yeah, that's basically it's just a way to uh, operate with your commands as a standalone object. Um, yeah, command first of all is a behavioral design pattern since it defines how different components interact with each other. Uh, to begin with, we need to implement the common command interface, uh, which should be implemented by specific commands. 
So this interface defines the, the, uh, that the execute method should be implemented inside these specific commands. Also, uh, uh, invoker triggers the command instead of sending the request directly to the receiver, which we have there. So it means that client code does not operate on the state directly for that commands are used. And uh, receiver itself knows how to perform the operation, and it's just an and it's just an object. So when we talk about receiver, uh, we are talking about the uh, the state or the object on which all these commands are operated. So what I meant by by having the state in mind. So um, in our application in general, we have three different operations. So the first one is we can add songs to our playlist. Uh, this, the second is that we can remove these songs. And the last one is that we can reorder our playlist. So our receiver is a state, uh, is a playlist which contains all the songs because we operate commands on these songs. So yeah, for the playlist commands, we define a common interface. And later uh, we have an, uh, a base class which uh, uh, also implements the undo operation, which just uh, uh, res uh, returns the playlist with a backup songs list. And when we are creating the command, we create a songs backup in the constructor, as you could see there. Later, uh, we implement the uh, specific commands. So to the add to playlist command, we add the song to the, to the songs list. When we remove the song from the playlist, we just call the remove on the list and also when we want to reorder the list, we just calculate the index and remove the song from the old place and insert it into the, into the a new one. Uh, so now when we want to somehow operate uh, on the songs list and for example, add a new song to the list, we, uh, we, we do not really just add a song as a normal add to list command. We need to exec execute uh, and the created command, which we implemented uh, before. So for instance, if we want to execute the reorder command, we just create a command which is reordered. We put all the required information inside of it, and then we can uh, execute it by passing it to our uh, qubit. Uh, I mentioned for this application, I have used the Flutter block package. And for those who are not familiar with the concept of qubit, uh, it is a part of, of the Flutter block package. And it is and it is a simplified version of block uh, when we want to call the functions directly instead of sending events to the block. So we can just use qubit. And as you can see, uh, before executing the command, uh, we store it in the command history stack. And yeah, we put it into the stack. And then we just execute co command by triggering the execute method on it. As you can see, before execute, uh, uh, before executing command, what I wanted to say, we put the command into the history list, so we know how to restore the state. And also for that list, we use the same unified interface i playlist command. And we know that this command will have the execute and later we'll have the undo method. So we just trigger them and later change the application state. So when I, uh, when I was talking about the undo operation, uh, we actually haven't created uh, an additional command for that. We just uh, trigger the undo last command method on the qubit directly. And then when this method is is called, we check the history list, whether there are any items in our history, and then we just simply undo the operation. Again, we don't really care about any specific implementation details. We just know that this command will implement the iPlaylist command interface, so we can just uh, undo the operation uh, in a unified manner without, uh, without knowing whether it was an add to the list command or remove from the list command or the reorder operation. We just can work with them in, an, in a unified way. And the last pattern is Memento. Um, actually, it's quite a complex pattern, but uh, when we implemented the specific commands, um, we just simply start a list of song as a backup option. So uh, however, this option is not uh, really nice, because technically, we could mutate this backup object from 
any part of the command uh, command code. So it's it just because the songs were just a simple list, right? Uh, thus, uh, we will use the Memento design pattern to encapsulate this backup and protect the from protect it from mutating mutating it. Um, so. Of course, the definition is uh, is visible on the screen, but in simple words, Memento lets you save and restore the previous state of an object, so-called a snapshot, uh, without relieving the details of its implementation. So if you see the structure, uh, Memento is, uh, is a behavioral design pattern. So we define a Memento interface, which restricts access to the concrete Memento by only providing uh, methods to just to get the state. Uh, concrete Memento itself stores the originator's uh, internal state and also uh, protects access by objects other than the originator itself. Uh, caretaker only keeps the Memento as a backup um, uh, and it does not really operate on the backup directly. And yeah, originator uh, create, uh, creates uh, and is responsible for creating the concrete mementos. And, and yeah, that's basically it. Maybe if we see the specific example, it will be more clear. So firstly, we define the memento interface, uh, which exposes a method to get the state. Then we implement a specific memento. So in our case, we want to uh, save the whole playlist as a backup option. So we start the playlist. And when creating the memento, we just copy the current existing playlist and store it inside Memento. Now the originator uh, class uh, takes care of the Memento's creation itself and implements the restore method, which retrieves the playlist back up from the Memento object. So these are just the helper classes to implement the Memento pattern itself. Uh, but we, if we look at the caretaker, which in our case is the command, uh, we, we see that instead of storing a list of songs, which should, should be as a backup, we now store the Memento object. And if you notice the code, we do not really operate on the songs list in any way. So the, our backup is completely, completely encapsulated and uh, it is restricted to, to change it. And, and yeah. That's basically the main idea of Memento pattern. We just do not allow to change the backup in, inside the command from, from the outside code. And if we look at the uh, execution of the command, it's, it's exactly the same as it was before, but instead of uh, passing the uh, playlist songs uh, as a backup, we pass the originator, uh, which, which is created, yeah, which is created and the playlist is stored inside of it. Um, and if we compare uh, the code uh, of the playlist command now, so before we had a uh, songs backup, which was a, was just a list. So technically in the undo operation, we could just before uh, returning the copied playlist, we could, let's say, remove one item from the list. So our backup was not really scoped, uh, not, not really encapsulated. We could uh, change it. And now with uh, the Memento, it is encapsulated and we cannot change the songs list directly. And about the execution, maybe it's uh, an obvious uh, code example which, which shows this encapsulation before we just operated directly on the playlist songs, uh, right? And now we're having the Memento, we cannot do that anymore. We just need uh, in, in the beginning to get the current state and then we just, uh, uh, return the change playlist with the updated songs list. So we do not really uh, change the backup itself. We just uh, change how we can operate on it and it's all encapsulated. Whew, a lot of information. That's it from my side, actually. I see that we are running out of time, but I know it was a lot of information to put into a single presentation, right? So it takes time to understand some of these concepts. So. If this, this, this talk seemed interesting to you, do not hesitate to visit my Medium profile and learn more about any of these design patterns visible on the screen. Uh, each design pattern has its own article about it. So it uh, contains uh, some specific examples, some considerations, advantages, disadvantages, uh, some general ideas how to use the pattern. So yeah, j just visit the Medium profile and you can learn it from there or from the uh, Gang of Four book. So thank you, that's it from me.
Hey, thank you very much.